Welcome to My Life, My Songs. I'm your host, Jimmy Fortune, and we have a fantastic show for you today. We're sitting down with Grammy Award winning, Queen of Bluegrass, and the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry, Miss Rhonda Vincent. Rhonda, thank you so okay. much for being a part of this show today and uh, coming to tell your stories and everything. Now, I know you grew up in Missouri. I did. And uh, with a family of uh, that's just uh, one of the greatest in the business. So you almost didn't have a choice to be in the music business, right? We didn't. You know, Darren and I always say we, we either played or we didn't eat, and we like to eat. So, <laughs> But it, it really was my mom, when she, she married my dad, automatically, he said, here's the upright bass, because my grandfather, who was in the group, it was five generations, and they had played together. So uh, my mom started playing bass. She had never played bass before sang and yeah. played piano at church but you know taught her to play the upright bass because mm -hmm. my grandfather had he, he got emphysema from working in the coal mine so he wow. couldn't uh, he didn't um, have the energy to play that anymore so mom started in playing yeah. and as we were born we started singing and we started playing so you you started with the mandolin at like five and I, then, and well then I was the eight yeah. I, I actually dad got me a snare drum when I was six well, well, I know that's I'm not in the, I'm glad you <laughs> stick with that I know that's <laughs> it's not in the bluegrass guidelines so uh, <laughs> we can't do the drums there yeah. but uh, I started I guess that was the only instrument left you know it was my mom and dad mm -hmm. my grandpa aunts uncles cousins and friends we were called the Sally Mountain show and right. uh, when I was five we had a television show radio show made our first recording so um, I started playing the snare at eight uh, most of the things that I played were probably by almost everything writing songs are, I've done by necessity and so we were at a place called the Frontier Jamboree in Marceline, Missouri, which is the hometown of Walt Disney. Wow. Well, yeah, didn't, I didn't you have know, to visit I'm, I'm uh, Marceline. Today. <laughs> so when did you actually go on your own as far as a... Well, it wasn't for many, many years. Yeah. You know, we traveled the world. Uh, this the Sally Mountain Show. Mm -hmm. My mom and dad, my brothers, Darren and Brian. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I met James Stroud. Uh, as I was recording, I still with my family, and I met James Stroud, mm -hmm. and Carl Jackson introduced us, another great songwriter. Oh, you better believe it. He I said, love Carl. He said, uh, you need to give James a CD. He was in Studio A uh, recording a guy, it was brand new, by the name of Clint Black. Oh my god. So gosh. never had recorded be uh, you know recorded before. So I met James, gave him a CD, said I want to work with you and a year later he was the president of Giant Records. So that's kind of it was not like a I'm going to go from the family to bam I'm not going to be with my family. It mm -hmm. was uh, it was a gradual process. It's like this way of life just kind of evolved into you know a career and into a solo career then you know a few years later my dad was so upset yeah. whenever I said, "You know what? I'm going to I'm going to going into country music." and I won't be playing with the family anymore because they said you need to wow. make a choice. Are you country or are you bluegrass? Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm glad you, you never <laughs> you never put it down, I can tell you that, but you always knew that that's pretty much, that was your calling as, as far as, as music goes. Well, it's what I, what I wanted to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's it's like something you, I didn't really think about it. You know, usually you come out of high school and they say, "What are you going to do?" Mm -hmm. You know, what what do you? And so, mm -hmm. I went to college and I majored in accounting. I also took photography classes and wow. and um, and yoga. <laughs> <laughs> some also some crazy things. So, um, but yeah, just always you know, it, music was always what we did. It wasn't like this. You didn't think of it as this is a business yeah. or a career. My my family, we were invited to play in Medford, Oregon. From Green Top, mm -hmm. Missouri, and so and this is the kind of the scenario of growing up. They invited us to play the Sally Mountain Show, and my dad said okay. And so we went to we drove in the motorhome 40 hours one way to Medford, Oregon, from Green Top, played our show, got back in the motorhome, and drove the 40 hours back. And I'm sure it was not um, you know we probably yeah. didn't make a lot of money on that trip because right. it was so far. Uh, but it was kind of if you if they invited you to play, they asked us to play the the nursing home right. once a month. We always played the nursing home once a month, you know, and, <laughs> awesome. and that was just a standing thing. I'm sure Darren and I didn't have the best attitude at that. We'll be right back with more My Life, My Song right here after this. Welcome back to My Life, My Song. 
<laughs> well, have you have you always had the energy you have? Because when you hit the stage, I mean, it's just like, bam! You're you're you just have, you're, you're just uh, you're magnetic, and you and you just uh, I don't know, you just entertain the crowd so so well. And well, I guess thank that you. came from that came from the the years with your mom and dad and. My yeah, mother, course. my grandmother, yeah. we they kind of have that same drive. My mom was an EMT for 30 years and she uh -huh. at, she not, at one time she was an EMT, a um she's also a hairdresser, had her own shop, plus she went to like five different nursing homes. She was mm -hmm. doing air this was all at the same time. Plus she was the president of the housing board that was mm -hmm. nearby and right. and my grandmother, you know, president of the garden club, she was probably the very first meals on wheels. Oh I don't gosh. remember. I don't remember a time visiting my grandmother. Yeah. She would fix the meal, and then she would sit pie plates out on the table, and she would fill those mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. put aluminum foil over, and we would eat. And she would be gone, and she was delivering it to all of the shut-ins in town. Wow. And she did that every day. But after Giant, you know, you signed with uh, Rounder Records, and so how was that for you when you? That was a pivotal moment. Yeah. You know, being yeah. in the right place at the yeah. right time. Um, I signed with them. My, my first project was released in 2000, mm -hmm. January of 2000. Right. Um, I think something that really set the tone, mm -hmm. you know, here I am signing with my, an agency, you know, and having my own band and signing with a label. All of the pieces are in place. And then the Wall Street Journal did a review of my album. That was, there's, there's a couple of pivotal things I, I feel that mm -hmm. really gave us a leg up. The Wall Street Journal reviewed the album and they said, ooh, Rhonda Vincent, the new queen of bluegrass. Right. And, and also then shortly after that, I signed with Martha White. You know, in the tradition of Latin Scruggs, they still may be the longest continuous sponsor of the Grand Ole Opry. And so they, they sponsored me for 15 years. And I think there was these, just these wonderful things that really set the tone that, that gave me this leg up and it's right. like a confidence even. Uh, Kentucky Borderline was awarded 2004 Song of the Year oh, by yes. the International <laughs> Bluegrass Music Award. And uh, how did that come about? Well, I was actually walking around Opry Mills mm -hmm. and I had this, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I had that in my head and I called Terry Hurd, bluegrass broadcaster. Mm -hmm. I sang it on his, uh, this is back when we had, think had codophones. Mm -hmm. You know, oh where the red God. lights. So I sang it onto his codophone. He came home and hit it. The next thing you know, he did all this research. Now I don't know if you do this. So it's you know, it's a train song, mm -hmm. and it talks about the 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 line, the cities that this train went through. The, you know, and he went to great research to make sure, like if you write a song, the authenticity of that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have to do that, or is it just a fictional song? No, I, I feel like I have to. I don't know. I can't just make something up. I, I just can't do that. You want it to be, be the real. real. That's that's yeah. what he did. Yeah. He said because we had different things. Um, I think it was even the color of the smoke. He said at this at the timing where this was set. I think we had black smoke. I think it's white mm -hmm. smoke rolling. He said at that time what they were burning would have been white smoke. I mean he would things I never even think about. Wow, I can't imagine. I, so that was well, that song has become our most popular song and, and uh, so one that we we can't you know you always I'm sure you always have to do Elizabeth and for us for bluegrass music we have to do Kentucky. Yeah, I mean even when I go uh, play churches and everything, you know, I think well they just want, you know, the gospel songs and uh, and before I'm out of there somebody's saying <laughs> Play Elizabeth, play Elizabeth. You have you know. to sing Elizabeth. And I bet so, that's right. But there's, you know, there's a story behind that too. Elizabeth's not, it's not a, it's not a bad song to play in church oh, because no. it's brought people together. You know, I had a woman walk up to me one time and say, um, she said, uh, you know, Jimmy, she said that song Elizabeth. She said my husband left me for a woman named Elizabeth. <gasps> no. Yeah. And she said, and I still love that song. Oh <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's saying something for the song. Oh, that man. says yeah. a lot for it. <laughs> We'll be right back with more My Life, My Songs after this. Welcome back to My Life, My Songs with your host, Jimmy Fortune. Now you're a, a, a very patriotic person. So Absolutely, you've written, yeah. yeah. So you've written you know, some, some patriotic songs. Tell me about your, your belief in, in, in our country and how you feel about that. Well, I, I, I wrote a song called God, God Bless the Soldier. Right. And that was an experience. I was at Fort Hood, Texas. Mm -hmm. and expecting, we had we had performed 10 days in a row, started out on the East Coast, heading to California. 10th day was in Fort Hood for Martha White, and I was gonna spend the day by the pool. I was gonna perform that night, you know, it's gonna just, I'm gonna rest. When we arrived, this is a, in typical military uh, fashion. When I got, we got, arrived, I think at seven or eight in the morning, mm -hmm. they had a full day scheduled for me. A first was a visit at the military hospital. 
And, you know, I'm like, I'm exhausted. I'm thinking, oh, my, so there's a visit to the military hospital. There was a, a luncheon with the general. There was, you know, every, the entire day was scheduled. So it's like, okay, I got ready. And I went to the military hospital thinking, you know, why am I here? I, I didn't really appreciate this until I got there. First lady I saw was a lady standing with her bags who's been in the hospital. And they said, well, they said, you need to see this woman. She's been discharged, but she's waiting for you. She found out it was coming. Mm -hmm. And I went to see, I'm, and I'm getting mm -hmm. chills just thinking about this. Mm -hmm. I walk in and talk to her and she goes, thank you for coming to see us. We appreciate this. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's thanking me for, mm -hmm. I, I didn't really understand that. And, and as I, I went on and I'm, one lady was just out of surgery. If I'm out of surgery, do you want to see anybody? You know, and I remember them asking her, Rhonda Vincent's here, would you like to see her? Mm. She can barely, she goes, yes, yes. Oh my God. She just out of yeah. surgery, not even, and I went in yeah. and, and talking to these people and they were thanking me so much. Mm. And I just thought, as I, I got back to the hotel that night after our show, and I started to go to sleep and I set up, and as you say, a God thing, Got the, you know, out of the desk, you've got the, this tiny little piece of paper, mm -hmm. got the pen from the hotel room, and I, God, oh, yeah. God yeah. was holding this, and I wrote this song called God Bless the Soldier. It is a true story. Mm -hmm. talks about the lady and, you know, thanking me, and just, you know, I am, I'm so thankful yeah. that they gave their sacrifice for us. You know, we get to sing and play, and how, how, oh. how what a blessing that is. You're exactly right. I feel the same way. I mean, uh, when I think about, uh, matter of fact, about a month before the Statter Brothers came and, and kind of, I guess you may say, discovered me or whatever, I had tried to join the Air Force. Oh, my goodness, no way. I was going into the Air no Force way. because I wanted to serve the, my country. I just really had this desire to do that. And uh, so they, I did all the tests and everything. They, they found out how many kids I had, and they wouldn't let me get in. Oh, no, really? <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't let me get in. But, you know, my life could have changed But uh, at yeah. that point. But... I really wanted to do that, like, like, yeah, and I know you do too. You yeah. Want, so I feel like then I took on the the part of well, if if I've got this music thing going and I can maybe at least pay tribute to my, uh, you know, our veterans, absolutely, and men and women who served and those who've given their lives for us, which was were more than a name on a wall was when it came about. Wow. So. Uh, well, God had the plan. Yeah. He He sets that plan for us, and we don't even we don't even know what direction we're going to go. Sometimes. But I'm just like you, and I think He He uses us as a as a tool. You know, when you feel like you have a purpose in this world, and your purpose is to bring some kind of hope and and to other people, and and that's just exactly what you're saying right there. It's it's so so great to hear you say it, and I know, I knew you felt that way about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You also did a duet with uh, one of my favorite singers, country singers, Mr. Daryl Singletary. Oh my goodness. And, oh my gosh, Love it is Daryl one of the best. Tell me how that came about <laughs> and, 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 and your experience with that. Well, the, the craziest thing is I had, I already had eight or nine projects going. I had, mm -hmm. I had, uh, Live at the Ryman, you know, DVD, Blu-ray, CD, so there was three. Mm -hmm. uh, I had all these projects going. And, and Daryl called me because we had talked about it. You know, we would sing around town. We'd always sing after the fire's gone. Love singing together. Mm -hmm. And we always talked about doing a project. And he call, in the middle of this, of all these projects, he calls and said, hey, when are we going to do that duet project? Once again, God mm -hmm. paved this way. Mm -hmm. And my husband, Herb, he said, you cannot take on another project. We cannot afford this. You cannot take on a 10th project. I said, Herb, and I just felt, I said, we have to do this pushed all of the other projects aside, and we went in and we recorded this, uh, this duet project, uh, released it, did, uh, we did CMA Music Fest, and we did the opera, we did all of these things. Thank goodness, little would we know, just months later, I know, I, I was just dumbfounded when they said Daryl's passed. It's like, oh, this yeah. cannot be, this cannot be. I was the same way when I heard it. And I said, yeah how God knew, yeah. and it's like, get this project done. Right. Get this, and you know, we mm -hmm. just, I love singing with him. It yeah. was such a fun process. He would, at that time I had a, a studio at on uh, Tulip Grove. Mm -hmm. He came, we sat on the couch and we would listen to, you know, listen to songs, trying to pick the songs mm -hmm. that we were gonna do and, and getting to know him. Like he would say, uh, I only have till this time, I, I gotta get home and put on my ham. It's like wow. uh, getting to know him on a personal level like yeah. that. You know, he's going to go home. He's putting his ham on. One morning I called him and I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm sitting here crying. 
because he had twin boys yeah. that were five at the time, and he said um, they didn't want to. They didn't want to go. They said, "Daddy, we want to go with you." They didn't want to mm -hmm. go, and he had to make them go to school that day, and he took them into school mm -hmm. with them going, "Daddy, Daddy, we want to go with you," and oh, and once again, I'm getting I'm getting chills, and he. Yeah. So he said, I'm sitting here because he said they I had to make them go to kindergarten today and they 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 were they wanted to go with me. Oh. So uh, yeah, that, that. but that tells you, I mean, he was so tender hearted. Yeah. Just what a, 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 a tender hearted man that he was. But yet one of the greatest singers that. Oh, lived. yeah. He could, he could he could sing a country song, man. I'm telling you. I feel like if he if he would been you know, 20 years earlier, he would have been probably oh. one of the biggest stars, you know, like like a George Jones or, or whatever. Absolutely. But uh, everybody, when they when you say you want to hear somebody sing a country song, you talk about him singing, it, and and you also. Oh, and so when y'all two got together, that in itself was a so God funny. thing. There are lots more great stories up ahead on my life, my songs. Thanks for coming on back to my life, my songs. So tell me a little bit about Like I Could. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, originally intended as a duet for Vince Gill, right? No, um, had that, that was, well, Jeannie Seeley, uh, we were riding around Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Gus Arendale, Springer okay. Mountain Farms. Mm -hmm. So we were riding around Nashville, uh, w the way I got Like I Could, and she had just done, now she had never, she'd co-written before, but never like set an appointment, okay. and I'm gonna get together with writers. Mm -hmm. First time she'd ever done that in however many years. And she set that appointment because she said she was terrified that she would not have have anything to contribute. Mm. So she already had, like I could, kind of started, you know, anticipating this meeting. And she said I was so she was so nervous. Anyway, they wrote the song. Aaron Enderlin, Bobby Tomberlin, Jeannie Seeley. Now she and I are thanks to Gus. We're riding around Nashville. She starts singing me this song. Mm. I loved it instantly. I said, oh, I said, I would love to record it. And she goes, are you serious? I said, yes. Like, I, she was just sharing this with me. So now months later, she was recording an album uh, her, that's, that's been released last year. And she has a song called All Through Crying Over You. It was supposed to have been a duet with Vince Gill. Oh, okay. Vince okay. said... He said, it doesn't really work for me, but you should get Rhonda Vinson. It's like, Vince Gill recommended me sing on, an mm -hmm. on a duet? This is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. So Jeannie called me, and we went in the studio, and I, uh, I sang on her, on her song, All Through Crying. Mm -hmm. Well, I overheard them say that the next session was canceled, and I had been looking for the timing to record like I could and get this album mm -hmm. started two years ago. And uh, so I said, could I get that 2 o'clock spot? It was at Ocean Way, which right. has become now one of my favorite studios yeah, at yeah, anywhere. Beautiful, how beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, within an hour's time, I started calling musicians and Eddie Lang and William Bagby, they both said, we can be there. Only I said, can you, you be here that. in an hour? <laughs> <laughs> can you be here in an hour? And it's like, they came over there and, and uh, <laughs> anyway, we recorded like I could and on the same day that I recorded on her project and at the same place. Wow, wow. But love the song and, mm -hmm. and have, I've since, uh, Jeannie started writing a song for me 15 years mm -hmm. ago, lost it all in the flood uh, here, wow. and you know, her house was, was flooded, mm -hmm. and she said it pieces, she's been, all these years now, been trying to re recreate it and rethink of what the words were and writing them down. So recently she said, I feel like we have to finish this song. She says, I want to write with you and Erin Enderlin, and I want to write in my dressing room at the Grand Ole Opry. So about a month or so ago, we went to the Grand Ole Opry and we wrote this song and pretty much got it finished. Once again, how God paves mm -hmm. this road, this road of life. If you listen and you, mm -hmm. you, you seek his will for you. So we are getting ready to perform on a TV filming for the Missouri Bicentennial. And the song is called... I miss Missouri. Oh my God! <laughs> so how Perfect. timely is that? Perfect. Perfect. I'm and she's hoping now. Jeannie, you know, she has got big plans for this. She now thinks it should become the Missouri State song. So we'll hope for that. She was telling me about that recently, <laughs> but you know, you recently became the newest member of the Grand Ole Opry. Now I know you well enough <laughs> to know that that was a moment in time that you go, you stand there and you go, me. You know, yeah. 
But I want to tell you, you deserve it. You deserve oh, it over you. and over and over again. Thank you so much. Um, but if anybody deserves it, you did. But you, te you took <laughs> the bull by the horns, and you have been enjoying that. So tell me how it felt when they called your name. Well, the night that she invited me, mm -hmm. I, I thought my ears, you know, you hear them, and I'm thinking, I'm looking at her face, and I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I, I didn't really hear. She didn't say what I, <laughs> I heard. You know, my ears is like, are you, because I asked her the same thing. I said, are you serious? Yeah. And uh, so she says, well, what's your answer? Mm -hmm. How would you like to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry? February 28th of 2020, I waited 343 days until the induction was February 6th of 2021. So thank you, Lord. <laughs> what do you think is next for Rhonda Vincent? You know, I'm just enjoying the, being a member of the Grand Ole Opry. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about getting back out on the road and performing. I have a brand new album that just came out. I feel like it is a a landmark career album for me. It's called Music Is What I See. And it has, uh, I think it's the most challenging in, in vocal singing. You know, you think that you've sang, it's like, okay, I'll go sing this. I did, I think it's the very first uh, ever bluegrass version of Unchained Melody. You probably sing that. I've done it, yeah. Done it. I had yeah. never sang it. Yeah. I spent 12 hours recording that vocal. Wow. I sang for six, went yeah. to bed, woke up, sang another six until we got it to where mm -hmm. I felt it was, it was right. And I am yeah. terrified to, to sing this on stage <laughs> after it took me 12 hours to record it. You should, you were never terrified. You, you just get oh, up there and you, you just take it and go with it. But, but that Ron, song is a challenge. I get, well, I can tell you what, it might be challenging, but you coming on the show today, thank you so much for coming. We are so glad that you did. Oh, my so pleasure. many people are going to hear this, and like I said, a lot of these young people out here that you know want to know how to get started, and things are going to hear your story, and they're going to be inspired. Aww. So thank you for coming and doing this with me today. Um, I'm so honored to have you. So thank you all for tuning in today to My Life, My Songs, and uh, we'll see you next time. God bless you all. <laughs>